God of War 2018 is considered by many to be the best game of the year, even the game of this generation, a defining moment in the history of gaming, setting the standard for all that follow. But for me, it was a disappointment, a tedious slog that tricked audiences into loving it through its technical achievements and pretentiousness. It's gonna be a long one, so grab a drink and a snack and get ready to get angry. This is how God of War was ruined. So before we break this disaster down, let's look at what made the God of War series so great in the first place. A little bit of history. March 2005, I first heard of God of War when I saw the GameSpot review. A 9.3 score, and the game looked so fun that I immediately drove out to buy it. From the very start of the game, you know you're in for a ride. The fire, the epic musical theme, and that iconic opening line. The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. Now there is no hope. Kratos is an instantly fascinating character. His look, his voice, and the sadness that pours through his expression as he throws himself into the sea. This game wastes no time in getting started. After a three weeks earlier setup, you find yourself on a ship in a thunderstorm, surrounded by monsters, the legendary Hydra destroying other ships in the background. Here you are allowed to experiment with the game's excellent combat system, one that is infuriatingly described by some as button mashing. Oh, you just mash square all day. Not really. Let's get into it. Six presses of square, the light attack button, will perform a simple combo and finishing hit. If you incorporate the heavy attack button, triangle, the combo will end in a heavy smash. And mashing these combos will get you through some of the game, sure. But if you don't learn to change it up and use other attacks and guard, you will start to get punished. Hard. And you'll get wrecked on higher difficulties where a collection of three enemy attacks will take you down. The heavy attack button launches light enemies into air juggles, and holding it launches enemies higher, followed by Kratos auto-jumping into the air for a focused line of attack. In the air, you can use a series of light attacks, heavy attacks to bounce more enemies into the air, or use grab, the circle button, to keep the enemy airborne and do focused damage. Mix it together for a fun time. As you progress, you unlock different attacks used in conjunction with the block button, longer animation attacks that add style or effectiveness to your fighting technique horizontal and vertical spinning attacks that do many hits through long animations, and heavy smashing attacks that do massive damage or hit enemies all around you. And God of War 3 takes it to a whole new level by introducing the grapple attack, a good interruption to enemy animations, and a great source of mobility. If you're able to continue your hits without getting hit yourself, or stopping for too long, you build your combo meter. The more consecutive hits you get in a combo, the more red orbs you get, and you need orbs to upgrade your weapons and magic. It's a risk though, as enemies will not respect your attempts to build hits. A multi-hit grab or a long spinning animation could be interrupted by an incoming attack, ending your hit accumulation. The spinning attacks give many hits to your counter, especially when surrounded, but you cannot stop the animation to block. You must commit to it and be careful. If you're just mashing it, you'll get hit. And on higher difficulties, that means you die fast, especially since hit stun allows multiple enemies to brutalize you in turn before you can recover. So you have to play smart, control the fight, and integrate multi-hit fancy attacks when you can get away with it. The grounded grab, circle, is a fabulous mechanic as it gives you the option of A, throwing the enemy at the others to give you some space, you can target different enemies to take out a specific threat too. This is your strategic control option. B, insta-killing to take out an annoying threat with a brutal kill. Starting with God of War 2, this and other grab kills give a reward of five orbs, making this option much more useful. And C, punching multiple times, which adds to your combo meter. You can use this option to push your combo meter just a little bit higher at the end of a fight to try for a higher orb bonus. Large enemies give prompts for minigames that lead to savage kill animations. And not for nothing, 
you are awarded extra orbs for these kills, and certain enemies may give you health afterwards, like the Minotaur, or magic from the Medusas or the Sirens. And as the game progresses, there are so many different monster types that the minigames usually feel fun to do because you don't encounter the same large enemy constantly. And these games do a great job of making you hate these enemies and really feel the rage inside of Kratos. So there's a primal satisfaction in shoving your blade into a minotaur's mouth or ripping the eyeball out of a cyclops. This is important. Do you see what the game is doing? The game is actively encouraging you to have fun and be flashy. It's incentivizing you to use multi-hit moves by tying their riskiness directly to the benefit of your combo hit counter, which rewards you for being creative and not stopping. And the minigame kills benefit your health, magic, and orbs, as well as serving as a release for your tension. The heavy attacks are there for when you just need something to die, and then a grab mixed in can help control the fight space or give a brutal kill. Magic gets added into the mix beautifully, as lightning spells control space and multi-hit. Medusa's gaze freezes enemies and gives large brutal kill orb bonuses as enemies shatter. Zeus's lightning bolt can multi-hit and effectively eliminate a targeted threat. And the other games follow this design and improve on it. God of War 2 has the Kronos orbs and the Typhon Windbow, and much better flashy attack animations. God of War 3, along with the amazing grapple, gives a bow and arrow as a separate ability apart from the magic, and there are four different weapons to use, featuring advantages in power, magic, and multi-hit ability. God of War 3 also allows you to switch weapons mid-attack, and finally gives you a lot of reasons to switch constantly. Not only are there great reasons to switch weapons, but it's also incredibly fun, and you'll want to switch weapons because you're having a great time. It's just fantastic design. Visually, the games are brilliant, beautiful, and inspired. All those amazing locations, and the scenery is always changing. Ships at sea in a storm, Hades, Mount Olympus, the Titan Atlas, swimming sections, the Steeds of Time, the Pits of Tartarus, the Caverns, Pandora's Temple, Athens, the Desert of Lost Souls, the Titan Gaia, the Labyrinth, flying across the sea. So many vivid scenes and meticulously framed. The fixed camera, while limiting the player's perspective, allows the game to have a truly cinematic presentation and sells the epic scope of the adventure. Kratos is small when set against this intimidatingly large world. Combat is also commonly framed by a distant, angular, often overhead camera. This allows the player to have full sight of the battlefield. You see what enemies intend to do and where they are, giving you the time to decide to roll, jump, activate magic, or block. Importantly, block is universal and auto guards against attacks from all directions. So you're fighting and all the while you're able to admire the beautiful scenes in the background and the design of the level because you're not distracted by having to move the camera all the time or watch for flashing indicators. In addition to great combat and visuals, there's exploration. It's a linear game, but there are lots of little hidden areas with bonuses for health and magic upgrades. Kratos has a classic platforming double jump he can climb many surfaces and ledges, scale walls quickly, and explore odd angles looking for treasure. There are lots of clever little secrets hidden, and many include having to think creatively and jump and climb. God of War 2 and 3 introduced the wings of Icarus, which you brutally rip from his back. Now able to glide long distances, the games start to feel even larger. Boss fights are epic sometimes involving puzzle elements like climbing boxes to impale the hydra or freezing and breaking the mirror in the sisters of fate fight hercules zeus the colossus the minotaur 
Ares, Kronos, Hades, Perseus, Poseidon, the Barbarian King. They're all so good, and the games do a great job of making you hate these characters so much that you want to see them dead, especially Ares and Zeus. Speaking of puzzles, these games have plenty of them. Not so hard that they ruin your fun, and usually not so easy that it's obvious in five seconds. Construct a wall, maneuver the box before the spikes kill you, swimming quickly to avoid traps, Hera's garden using weird visual manipulation to create pathways, using time travel to prevent suicide, pass through portals to unlock secrets, the ice melting puzzle, open the architect's tomb and cross the platforms, raise the grapple hooks and freeze time to cross the rooms, And the story is fantastic. Kratos, the greatest Spartan warrior, sells his soul to Ares, the god of war, in exchange for victory in the face of defeat against the barbarian king. In service of Ares, Kratos' thirst for blood leads him right into Ares' trap, and in a blind rage, he accidentally kills his wife and daughter, severing his emotional ties to the world, to forever be Ares' servant. The town oracle curses Kratos to be eternally covered in the ashes of his dead family, always reminded of his sin. He turns his back on Ares and swears allegiance to Zeus and the other gods of Olympus, serving them for years in exchange for their forgiveness. When Ares lays siege to Athens, the gods must stop him but are forbidden from intervening directly. Thus Kratos is tasked with finding Pandora's box to obtain the power to stop Ares which will end his service to the gods and finally win their forgiveness. This takes him through Athens, the desert of lost souls, the back of the titan Kronos, Pandora's temple, and the underworld Hades, leading to the final confrontation. All the while we are fed pieces of this story paced out like a good mystery. You finally do battle with Ares, including a surreal dream fight where you battle your own guilt and protect your family from yourself even going so far as to allow you to transfer health to them by hugging them. Ultimately, Ares falls, and while you are forgiven of your sins, the gods will not let you forget. Kratos must still be tormented by the memory of what he's done, which he can't handle. So he steps off a cliff to die, but is then rescued from death as the gods need Kratos to take over as the new god of war, a mortal given godly status and power to forever watch over and guide the wars of man. So don't tell me that the new God of War finally gives the series a good story. The original games, especially the first one, have fantastic stories filled with drama, character, emotion, and an epic sense of adventure. And I don't know if people have just willfully forgotten or if they're actively being dishonest by lying about the nature of these games' stories, combat, and everything else. But just because Kratos isn't walking around all depressed with a child next to him doesn't mean that these games deserve to be dismissed. All right. Now that we appreciate what made the original series so great, let's compare them to the new God of War. From the very beginning, we have a very stark contrast in tone. No epic music, and there's an option for easy mode which says, give me a story. To me, this reveals that the creators have prioritized story and experience over gameplay. Maybe that's fine for something like The Last of Us, but not here. It's kind of a red flag. But okay, I'm a veteran. I'll pick hard. I want a challenge. Wait, what? I'm mashing R1 to cut a tree? Why? Why isn't this just a nicely directed cutscene? 
I guess I'm supposed to feel like I'm the one doing this? Okay, now we're walking, walking. Oh, really? Press the left stick to move. Thank you. In a boat, rowing, walking. Can I move faster? No. Can I go over there? No. Just gotta hold up, holding up, walking. All right, grieving over my dead wife. My second wife? Who was this woman? God, so dramatic with all the music. They're really trying to sell that this game is serious. Here we get the gist of the story. We meet Kratos' idiot son, who immediately proves he's an idiot by grabbing a hot blade from the top of a fire. So my son and I are going to climb the highest mountain to spread the ashes of a woman that I don't know in the slightest. Didn't even see her face or a flashback. Great motivation. Picking up some stuff from the ground. Walking. Can I swing this axe on my back? No. Wouldn't want to let the player break the immersion of this walking scene. This is just so... Uh. But you know what? Fine. Okay. Long intro. Serious tone. I like some serious games. I love Metal Gear Solid 1 and the original Silent Hills. And I'm not opposed to a total reinvention of a series. If it's good, I can give this a chance. Moving along, interesting place we're in. Ooh, what's over there? Maybe there's an item in there. X, pressing X. Come on, jump. Hmm, how do I jump? Menu, controls. I can't jump? There's no jump button? Wow, forget about double jumping. I can't single jump. Oh my. God, how do I get over this crevice if I can't jump? Circle? Oh, it's an interact button for stupid people, which causes Kratos to auto-jump Uncharted style. Suddenly, the entire series flashes before my eyes. All those memories of platforming, the exploration, the vertical level design, aiming and timing your jumps, the fast climbing, air juggling enemies, balancing sections, all gone in an instant, replaced with an auto jump that requires no skill. You can't fail. You will never ever miss a jump and fall in this game. Just hit the button and watch Kratos jump for you. Interact button over the tree. Again, no timing or skill involved. Uh, I'm getting worried. I've been walking around in the woods for like 10 minutes doing nothing. But relax, we can still save this experience. It's God of War, and Cory Barlog, the director of God of War 2, my favorite in the series, is back. It's gonna be great. This is just the start, a slow start. Now, what's this here? Okay, I can throw the ax and recall it with triangle. Cool, so an ax. Changing up the combat approach, up close and personal. Very cool, I like it. I like the weapon change. We got our first enemy, 15 minutes into the game, and we finally get to fight something. Let's go. Looks like our attacks are similar to the classics. Good. Light and heavy. But holding heavy doesn't launch into the air. Makes sense. Kratos has forgotten how to jump in his old age. And there's no grab. Wow. Significant parts of the combat system have been gutted. Okay, give him a little of this, a little of that. Okay, not bad. Throw the axe for a light hit, target the legs. Throw it with heavy and it freezes them, and then I use my bare hands. Got it. Now there's a sidestep to counter attacks. Okay, that's a little awkward for me, but I got it. It's cool. Hack, hack, dodge. Hack, hack, hack. Hack, hack, dodge. Throw. Recall, hack, hack, dodge. Wait, is this it? Is this all there is? I see that I'm not gaining orbs or XP. Is combat not tied to an upgrade system? 
Am I just hacking and dodging and auto-climbing ledges and collecting silver on the ground? Suddenly my heart sinks deeper into my chest as I start to fear that this is it for the whole game. And by the way, there is no magic. No Spartan army or summoning the souls of Hades. Just powers for your axe. A couple cool ones, sure, but most of them are fairly boring. They're all just ice-themed or axe-themed because it's an ice axe. You have to equip different abilities all the time, which is tedious. You can only use two out of the many that you'll find. So instead of a carefully crafted experience focused around certain magic abilities, they give you a ridiculous amount of customization options for powers to do whatever you want. They shove so much crap into the game with armor and abilities and blah, blah, blah. Can't you just design the game well around awesome items? Does everything have to be a huge open world where you run around collecting things and talking to strangers and hunting for items? Do you have to give me 40 different kinds of armor for my wrists? The last thing I want to do in a God of War game is sit in the inventory for 15 minutes scrolling through armor statistics. Let's talk a little more about the magic. In the originals, you had to refill your magic meter by finding blue chests. This meant that on harder difficulties, you had to be very wise about when you used it, especially since they give you less. Magic could really help you in a fight, but you didn't want to just use it all, because maybe in the next room, there's an even bigger fight. And if there's no magic chest from here to there, you're going to go into that fight with an empty magic meter, and that's a bad place to be. So again, strategy, resource management. Compare that to this game, where your special abilities recharge for free. And as you level up and your abilities get more powerful, they recharge even faster. So you can always feel comfortable using them, because they'll be back in a minute. If you really want to break things, you can find the Talisman of Unbound Potential, which instantly refreshes your special abilities. So walk into a fight, use all your abilities, drop the electric spell to stun everyone, refresh your abilities and use them again. Fight over! And as you're fighting, you get XP at random. This is perhaps my greatest complaint about the game. There's no reason to play with any style and no reason to keep your offense going because there is no combo meter. No combo meter to reward you for playing well and playing flashy. The only objective in new God of War is to kill all the enemies as quickly and efficiently as possible. It makes the combat so dull and repetitive and limited because the XP I'm earning is not dependent on how well I perform. All you're going to do in this game is mindlessly hack at the enemies, sidestep, and hit with your best attacks. No grabs, no air juggles, no risk reward. The creativity is entirely absent. And since the fights are mostly staged in similar ways to the originals, it just feels like the same old fights, but with a huge amount of limitations. Plenty of reviewers said asinine things like, finally God of War has a deep combat system instead of just being a button masher. Hey, the original's combat was way deeper than this hacking and dodging crap. Anyone who says the original games were just mindless button mashing, I dare you to pick up the originals on the hard difficulty, or Titan or Chaos difficulty, and never play defensively. See how far you get. Try playing without intelligently using your multi-hit attacks and grabs and magic, and see how fast you can upgrade your weapons. Good luck! And yes, those old games were designed to be played on higher difficulty once you mastered the combat. The combat was the main feature, and it was super rewarding to replay on those punishing difficulty levels. And the fact that they included those punishing difficulty levels in the new game is an acknowledgement of that but they did it without including the rich and fun combat system. How could they screw this up so bad? Now, let's talk about the camera. Corey Barlog, the genius director of God of War 2, insisted on this camera style. The cinematic camera is now gone in favor of this so-called immersive over-the-shoulder camera. This isn't immersive. This is immersive. I'm absorbed in the architecture and color of the setting. I have total freedom of movement. I don't have to worry about moving the camera as I fight. 
I can admire the glory of my rampage and constantly see Kratos' rage as he murders and the music swells behind me. Not this. This is tedious. I'm staring at the back of his head for 95% of this game. I'm aiming Kratos with controls designed for a shooter, and I can't see. Seriously, look at my vision range here. I can see one or two enemies, while there are multiple enemies behind me. Where are they? What are they doing? God of War Originals? Not a problem. The camera view lets you see all around you. If someone is going to attack, you react accordingly. But in this game, they change the camera to show only what's in front of you while keeping the surrounding combat scenarios of the originals. This does not work. It gets better in areas like corridors because this control scheme is suited for shooters like Gears or Uncharted or the new Tomb Raider. But significant amounts of combat are presented in open areas with enemies attacking from all directions. The only way to know if an attack is incoming is, you guessed it, on-screen indicators. Oh, how I hate on-screen indicators. So not only is my playing freedom restricted by being forced to constantly adjust the camera, but now I also gotta be following indicators flying around the screen and changing colors? There are enemies behind me doing something. I have no idea what, I can't see them. And one of them is gonna attack me. Which enemy? Which attack? Who knows? How should I react? Jump! F I can't. I guess I'll just roll and hope that I don't roll into something like a wall or another enemy that's running at me. It would be nice if I could see. There's also no universal block, so you can only block what's in front of you. Not good when so many attacks come from off screen. It creates a difficulty that comes from not being able to see what you're doing. And that is not the kind of difficulty that makes for a fun challenge in a beat-em-up game. Survival horror? Sure. But not this. When I finish a fight in New God of War, I don't think, Yeah, I did it. Bring on the next fight. I think, God, I'm so glad I don't have to do that anymore. Because there's no sense of focus. You're swinging the camera around the whole time and it just gets exhausting keeping track of everyone. And by the way, what's with the HP of these enemies? They seem to take a little too long to kill in the early game. And I'm just hacking away, using the same attacks over and over. They take longer to kill because the action is now focused on fighting single enemies up close. But it's too much. It's boring. They need to die faster and maybe up the number of enemies. But then we could end up with even more problems of enemies attacking you from off screen. You can spend an eternity staring into the void of monotony as you're mashing the attack button and dodging against higher level enemies. Hey, if you're having too much trouble in the fights, change it to normal. Well, that makes the game bad for a whole other reason. On normal difficulty, sure, the enemies have less HP, but your attacks do so much stun that the game literally does turn into a button masher. You don't have to do anything intelligent to defeat them. You can just screw around and make it through. And if the game eventually gets way too easy on hard, just imagine how normal it's gonna be. So either play normal and mash your way through, or play hard and make every fight a long, boring grind until you get overpowered. Pick your poison. As the game progresses and you level up, the enemies become pretty easy to cut through, and the game starts to trick you into thinking you're having fun. But you're not really. You think you're having fun because you're not as stressed. Around the time you get inside the mountain, the pacing of the game picks up and I found some pretty decent fights there. But if you stop and think about it, you're not actually excited by what you're doing. And you don't feel like you're accomplishing anything because there's really no reward or motivation. And there's so much health on the ground that you can always heal. And if you die, you come back with full health, even if you didn't start the fight with it. Don't worry about using all your runic powers. They recharge. Don't worry about finishing a fight with low health just die and come back with 
Don't worry about playing poorly. You earn the same XP regardless. This sucks. It sucks so much that the game has to constantly reward you with little pieces of loot to make you feel excited. The combat isn't enough on its own, and it should be. Instead of feeling good about saving resources and taking little damage, in this game it's just, okay, the fight is over. I hope I get to pick up lots of shiny things on the ground. The brutal kills are still here, as they're a staple of the series, but they're not as satisfying because you feel too separated from them. They felt earned in the originals. You had to wear them down enough to get that floating icon, and then you could go through the quick minigame to tear them apart. But violence wasn't the only reason. There was a purpose behind it all. Health or magic, uh, area of effect explosions, orb bonuses, or your combo meter. There was a lot of variety, and sometimes it granted multiple grab options. Isn't that so much more interesting than just mash the stun attacks until this boring enemy dies? Speaking of enemies, do you see anything in common with these designs? Did I mention that every one of them is just a dude? Pretty much. Dude. 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 Blue dude. Yellow dude. Archer dude. Hammer dude. Flying dude. Valkyrie dude. A dog. A wolf. A monkey. I miss the Cerberus, the Gorgons, the Minotaurs, the Wraiths, the Centaurs, the Satyrs, the Cyclops, the Chimera that's part snake, part lion, part ram, all that fantastical creature design. I guess some more outlandish monsters would detract from the serious and mature tone they were going for. Even the bosses are just dudes. The trolls? Oh, the troll battle. This is when things start getting obviously bad. This is supposed to feel like an epic fight, but my god is it boring. There's not enough attack variety to make this interesting. And he has so much HP that it feels like it goes on forever. What's worse is that this troll fight is copy-pasted all through the game over and over and over. Every time he shows up in whatever form, you just think, God, really? This game suffers from a severe lack of interesting enemies and boss encounters. The boss fights are mediocre to poor. The final fight is epic at times, even if it revolves around a dull story. Thor's sons are kind of fun. The dragon is meh. You hack at his toes and throw balls at him. It's more of a set piece than a boss fight. And it's not like the dragon is an antagonist of the story. It's just a random monster that you gotta fight. Technically impressive, yes but really nothing of consequence to the story. And this wouldn't have been so bad if there'd been some awesome fights around this, but no, this dragon fight should have felt huge like Kronos or the Colossus. Uh, these boss fights suck. It's just a bunch of troll clones and bosses that are overly simple and leave the action for the cutscenes. It's either a guy my size or something so big that it's impractical to actually fight. After 20 hours of this game, you finally have another confrontation with Baldur, and instead of designing a good fight, it's literally just two full minutes of mashing R1 and turning left and right. It's nothing! But at this point, are you surprised? There's no emotional connection to any of these boss fights either, or any fight in the entire game for that matter. There are no epic, bone-chilling moments like these. I am not the same man you found that day. The monster you've created has returned to kill you. God after God will deny you, Kratos. They will protect Zeus. Zeus must live so that Olympus will prevail. If all on Olympus will deny me my vengeance, then all on Olympus will die. 
I couldn't care less about this mother and son drama that has nothing to do with me, especially when it's told to me in little tiny fragments with many hours between them. I'm just killing these enemies because they're in my way. Oh, wait, finally. After traversing this dreary underworld level, do I get to fight that giant death bird? Do I? No, screw you. Here's another troll. So I'm annoyed, I'm bored, and I'm frustrated. And you know what else? You know what makes this so much worse? This little puñetas right here. He will not shut up. You know what the original God of War series really needed? An eight-year-old boy incessantly screaming, Father, look out, behind you, find a healing stone. And he never f***ing stops. His voice enters your brain like a parasite, and you start playing sloppier because you're annoyed by him on top of the awful, boring combat. On my first playthrough, I was playing on hard, so I was having to repeat a lot of fights in the early game, and his complaining was so annoying that before every fight, I had to go into the option menu, turn the dialogue volume all the way down just so I could fight in peace. And then, after the fight, go back to the menu, turn it back up so I don't miss the story. Because Kratos and Atreus talk all the f***ing time about dumb shit that I don't care about. I don't like you, kid! Go away! For the love of God, Santa Monica Studios, please give us a patch with a separate option to mute the boy during combat. It's not like we need to worry about protecting him. He's just there for us to spam his arrows. Mindlessly, by the way. The electric arrows turn the game's combat into a complete joke. These things get so out of control that every encounter is just activate electric spell, shoot electric arrows, use runic attacks, and clean up the rest. Look at this, I'm playing on hard, and all I have to do is spam the electric arrows and mash attacks and nearly every encounter turns into a broken mess. The only way around this is to play on the expert difficulty, which is a living nightmare for the first few sections. It eventually delivers a few more good fights, but then degenerates into the same spam fest for the most part. Great design, guys. Atreus is even worse because he doesn't talk like he belongs in this game. This is supposed to be set in Old Norse mythology, the times of Odin and Thor, but Atreus' English is way too modern. Take that? That's what you get? There's no way anyone would say that. There's no way the son of Kratos would speak like that. This kid even says whatever when he gets pissy. Whatever. 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 It says don't wake him. Whatever. I swear this kid is about to pull out a skateboard and sunglasses. He starts mocking the way Kratos talks and basically turns Kratos into a joke himself. Because Kratos is so one note through the entire game that he's like a parody. Let me guess. You're gonna be smug and say you told me we shouldn't get involved. Boy, read this. I said, the only time you care to talk to me is when you need me to translate for you. If mom was here- If your mother was still alive, we would not be here at all. In the original, he had a much wider expression of emotion. Here he's just monotone and somber from beginning to end. What are you doing, boy? There comes a moment where the kid almost becomes tolerable, but once he learns that he's part god, oh my god, he becomes insufferable. Odin's right. We are a threat. Enough about Odin and his whole stupid family. Nobody cared about him anyways. What's the difference? There are consequences to killing a god! Do you hear me? I heard you. And these are not subjects for discussion. Do not push me, boy. Fine. Watch your tone, boy. Whatever. Whatever. God, I can't express how much I hate this f***ing 
kid. And it boggles my mind that so many publications insist that there's a deep emotional bond between Kratos and Atreus, that this game has a moving emotional story. The original had an emotional story. The PSP game Chains of Olympus had an emotional story. It's emotional when Athena dies at your hands. It's emotional when Kratos realizes he's doomed to forever remember his past. It's emotional when you finally beat the living shit out of Zeus for turning his back on you, his son. But this? This little shit that doesn't even speak like a person from this world? That moans and complains constantly? Screams at me all the time while I'm trying to fight? That Kratos just calls boy for 40 hours? Get the f out of here! The only moments of real feeling in this game are the moments when Kratos is reflecting on his experiences from the other games. I haven't even talked about the story yet, because I don't want to. I can barely remember it. There are moments, sure, where you get drawn in. I mean, it's a well-crafted game, so that's gonna happen. The scene where Kratos is finally alone and reflecting silently on his past is truly captivating. But these moments are few and far between. You spend way more time just running favors for people. Which is so Kratos, am I right? Go find something for this guy. Go find something for this other guy. But I fear for my captain and crew. I believe they are still under the water. Will you find them for me? The main characters are just as uninteresting as the faceless spirits in the side quests. The main boss fight in the beginning, the one you beat by mashing attack and watching long cutscenes of transitions, is against a god that doesn't feel pain because his mother, the lady in the woods, blessed him with some kind of invulnerability and immunity to pain. And he really wants to feel again. And that's about it, really. Nothing Kratos can do anything about. And the rest of it is just mythology and world building. We don't really get to know the characters in this game well. He tries to kill his mom, Kratos stops him, then you fight him, and these characters barely have any presence in the game at all. They disappear for hours. It's all so scattered. They Maybe. do not concern us. Exactly. Nothing concerns me. I'm as interested in what's going on as Kratos is, which is to say not at all. Why is Kratos even here? I'm just trying to spread the ashes of my second wife from the highest mountain with my kid. Leave me out of your boring family drama. I'm on my own boring adventure. An adventure through some of the most boring levels ever. While many locations are well structured and intricate and impressive for a bit, I mean, how could you not be immediately impressed by the sights in this game? They quickly lose their charm. Water, rocks, grass, trees, mud, for hours. I'm so tired of walking around and rowing boats. On your first playthrough, if you're exploring all the hidden areas and dying frequently, you're gonna be looking at rocks and water for hours and hours. And once you finally get to Alfheim, it's the same thing. The change of worlds is super refreshing when you finally get there. But this too fades fast as you realize it's just another color of rocks and water and more boring structures from the same camera angle, the same auto climbing and unsatisfying combat. Levels are filled with long drawn out sections of walking around, climbing, carrying things, finding pathways. Jump through this water wheel by mashing the interact button. Can't miss time to jump and die. Just mash it until Kratos auto jumps. But yeah, you go 10, 15, 20 minutes without a fight, much less a good one. It's another way the game tricks you into thinking the combat is fun. They knew it was boring and that you'd realize it if there were a lot of fights. So they put an eternity of walking and rowing boats between them so you're excited to finally kill something. But you quickly become so powerful that the bland combat areas might as well not even be there. You'll find plenty of puzzles, and while a couple of them are good, get ready to do the same puzzle again and again. Nearly every single puzzle in this game is just find the hidden thing and throw your axe at it or shoot it. Cans to open chests, 
stones to free the dragon where you run around aimlessly looking for the right rocks to break, which could be anywhere. The game comes to a screeching halt as you wander around looking into the distance trying to find these things. And by the tenth time you've done it, you'll start losing your mind. Could they not come up with anything better than this? The game itself knows this. Remember in The Last of Us, after like the fourth time that you have to find a way to cross the river? Ellie jokes about the repetitiveness of the puzzles. Here, Atreus does the same thing. Greatest man or tallest tree begins as any more than me. Yeah, and see, stupid race. Being meta and joking about your repetitive puzzle design doesn't make it any better. Just make better puzzles. Hit the cans, shoot the exploding things to free the chests. But that introduces another problem I have. So many chests and items that it's very common for this to happen. You find yourself in an area with some kind of puzzle. Here, you have to move this glowing torch to different spots in less than 10 seconds each move. You have to explore this entire area looking for these transfer points and then babysit this thing to each one. It's easy to get disoriented because, well, there's no camera direction. You're spinning the camera all over the place. After seriously five minutes of running around these rocks and moving the torch, you finally get it to this door. Another chest. Okay, give me something good. Oh, another grip for my blades. It's a good one, but... I like the one I'm using, so I've just wasted my f***ing time. Thanks, game. Here's what they could have done. Enter an area and see that the goal of this puzzle is whatever thing. Axe pummel of blah blah blah, granting cooldown to your runic attacks. And then you could say, oh, hey, that sounds pretty good. I feel that it's worth the next 10 minutes of my time screwing around with this puzzle. Hmm. You know what game did this perfectly? Doom 2016 when you find the rune challenges, it immediately tells you what you'll win if you complete it. Because it could take you a while to get through it, and they don't want to interrupt the flow of the game. Right from the beginning, you can say, hmm, move faster for a short time after performing a glory kill. Nah, I think I'll pass. And then move on with the f***ing game. That's how you do it so you don't spend an eternity completing a puzzle or challenge just to get something you don't want. In God of War, you have to do all these puzzles if you want to find the stuff you want and suffer through plenty of stuff that you don't. I swear, look at all these axe pummels I've found. And I've found all these light runic attacks. I can only use one. Look at all these enchantments. Jesus Christ, I can only have like three or four of these equipped at any one time. I haven't used even 90% of these things. They're all so shitty or so specific as to make them virtually useless. Reduce poison damage? You almost never get poisoned in this game. Reduce burn damage? You almost never get burned in this game. And by the time you get them, you're already so powerful that they're obsolete. Am I expected to go into my inventory and change my enchantments and my rune attacks for every fight? Just make Kratos take less fire and poison damage as a way to level up. Don't make me equip all this stuff. You are driving me insane. But hey, it looks nice, right? Man, this game is a technical marvel. It's gorgeous and feels alive. I've never seen animations so lifelike. It's too bad the gameplay and the story don't live up to the same standard. It's beautiful. And the game insists that you acknowledge that fact. It doesn't want you to not see how good it looks, leading to moments where the game forces you to walk. Let's carry a tree. Let's carry a pig. Look at this turtle. We spent so long making this turtle. Look at it. 
Hey, I'm Kratos. You don't tell me what to look at. You don't tell me that I can't run in this part. The old games made me feel like I was Kratos. This one just makes me feel like I'm controlling him. And controlling him slowly. Slowly climbing up walls when we used to fly up them. You could double jump and catch the wall, leap up to the ledge and slide down and be done with it. Here, you just have to press the interact button to latch on and hold up and wait. Which, believe me, gets old after you've climbed about three times. You may think I'm nitpicking, but I'm not. This game is filled with an infuriating amount of brain-dead climbing. Just hold up and wait. Can't jump up or slide down. Just another instance of player agency being stripped away from us in favor of this cinematic crap. And this seemingly minor change led to the single most frustrating time I had in the entire game my first playthrough. Enter this part of Midgard by the Hellwalker quest and go into the cave. Hold up slowly to climb the walls, climb down the chain, and two powerful wolvers appear. You'll probably lose due to not being highly upgraded and not understanding how to fight them. And the fight is in a very constricted area. And if you die, you go back to the bottom of the wall. You go back to the bottom of the wall, and even though I like to stick out a tough fight for as long as it takes, I was losing my mind repeatedly climbing up. It's what I feared the most about dying, climbing again. There came a point where I just said, no, I am not climbing that f***ing wall again. Which brings me, finally, to the challenge realms, which are awful. Niflheim must be the worst idea in the game. Hours of tedious, boring resource grinding, where you repeatedly open chests, hundreds of them, to unlock armor that you don't even need anymore. And then there's the Muspelheim battle trials, which are either frustrating and boring, or comically easy and boring depending on how bad you've broken the game through the terrible RPG-style leveling system. It's also a perfect example of how this game values immersion over gameplay. The original series also had these challenges, remember? And not only were they more fun and interesting, but you could easily access them from the menu. Want to play a specific trial? Just click it and it starts. How convenient! In this game, every trial is separated by three minutes of slow, pointless mountain climbing. Why? More climbing? F Maybe this is the final trial. The trial of infinite patience. Though, I guess that's a good way to describe this entire game. So, we've looked at all my complaints. Do you feel the same way? Probably not. Everyone loved this game, while I was left dumbfounded. Why did this game get so much praise? That's the question, right? Well, I think it's a few factors. One, people and critics already decided that they were going to love this game before it came out. There was so much hype around this huge return of Kratos, as there should have been. He's a special cultural icon, unique in gaming. His games are great, and Cory Barlog, director of God of War 2, the best in the series, was back in the director's chair. It looked gorgeous, and while I was worried about the amounts of walking and talking and babysitting, I was still excited and ready to love it too. I bought it the day it came out, anxiously, and three hours in, I had my head in my hands in disbelief and disappointment. It's similar to the way I felt at the end of the new Predator film, sitting in the theater opening night. 2. People are blinded by the technical achievements. It's so beautiful and well-crafted, and all the animations feel lifelike and smooth and intricate. The controls are tight. There's a real weight behind every attack as old Kratos swings his heavy axe. It has exciting moments, and it impresses with its enormousness in moments like the talking snake and staring down from the snowy mountain. 3. Or they just like it. 
they had fun with it, and you had fun with it too. Cool. It's not a terrible game. There are some really enjoyable sections, and it's impressive. A friend of mine told me that if it weren't called God of War, I wouldn't hate it. Look, I don't hate it. It's not terrible in every way, like Silent Hill Downpour, or some broken indie Steam trash game. I'm not putting this and Fallout 76 in the same category, but this could have been so much better. If it weren't called God of War, I would say that it's an incredibly impressive, mediocre game with repetitive combat, restrictive character movement, and a forgettable story. I'd say that it's decent and worth checking out because it's solidly made. It's a very complete package, obviously made with love and care, and there's not a trace of predatory microtransactions. It's a large and realized single-player experience, and that should be encouraged in this day and age. But nothing more than that. If it were its own original game with an original title, I'd say it's just alright. But as an installment in the God of War series, it goes in all the wrong directions. This game is a weird case for me because I hate so many decisions that they made, but the game is still put together really well. It's the only game that I don't actually like, but I've played like a hundred or more hours of. The game kind of hypnotizes you into playing it more and more. Even if you never feel a sense of excitement, you still feel like you have to push on. Even if you know that you're not going to find a good fight or interesting item, you feel like you have to go check out that little area on the beach. Even if the story of this game is boring, my attachment to Kratos keeps me moving. I don't know, like I said, it's a weird case. Before you accuse me of just not wanting things to change, I'm a fan of the original Resident Evils, and I really like the Resident Evil 2 remake for the most part. I'm an old school Doom 1993 fan, and Doom 2016 is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm not against games coming back and being reimagined. However, I do have a problem with stripping out what made the originals so good in the first place if you're not going to replace it with something equally good. If you were to ask me if I would recommend this game, I would say, sure. Everyone should check it out because its positives are really strong, but don't expect to be excited by the gameplay and get ready to be really bored sometimes. Look. I know that if they had just made this game exactly like the originals, it would have felt stale. I get that. I like that they attempted a new direction, but there are so many areas in which they failed. God of War 2018 removed virtually everything great about the originals and replaced it with mediocrity, pretty graphics, and self-importance. Thanks for watching my video. Whether you love this game or not, thanks for watching. This is my first video like this. Maybe I'll do another. I don't know. This is a lot of work. I apologize for the video and the audio not being of great quality. I have a cheap video capture card and I had to borrow a microphone uh, as I never expected to do something like this. Uh, like and subscribe. Share with a friend if you like it. I'll probably play a lot of Doom Eternal and Mortal Kombat 11 when they come out twitch.tv slash under the mayo. I never stream, but I might. Thanks. Bye.